days, all days. Been a road, been a road. And then beating the door down, though. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I so, uh, uh, I'm gonna got a question for you first, Muhammad. Would mm. give me your, your insight on what advice you get to clothing brands in the area now mm. to help advance them or you know take it to the next level? Some stuff, stuff you saying from the outside, not no particular name, just, just period, in overall. general. Um, one thing I see with a lot of them. And I, I pay attention to just about everybody, for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got to understand that it take money. And I, because see, clothing is a, it's a recycle thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, I spent 50 right here. I'm going to make 100. Wait till I make the 100. Then I'm going to take the 100 and go see. This ain't that. This is why you making that 50, you gotta spend another 50 mm -hmm. because spring and fall is coming, right. or you know what I'm saying? Summer and fall is coming. Mm -hmm. So you gotta spend that on that mm -hmm. while you waiting to sell this out. You know what I'm saying? You gotta constantly tell customers, hey, you should shop here. You this is new. This is new. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um now I think that one of the biggest advice I would give to somebody, when you think about the name of your clothing line, mm -hmm. think beyond you and your friends. Mm, that's because good. that's the very first negative response that you'll get mm -hmm. off of the name. Because if they don't know you, know where from, every so often they'll see a shirt and be like, oh, okay, cool. But then they're going to look into the name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then some of the content I think that brands are putting on their garments mm -hmm. is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then some of those things you can't come back from. Mm -hmm. So I say that first... Figure out the name, make it make sense. What's the story behind the name? Mm -hmm. What direction you going in? What's your target audience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's your target audience? And then what do you want your brand to say without saying? You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. some people, they create in a hoodie. They might put the name on there. Then after the hoodie, they don't got nowhere to go. Right. You got to know, okay, cool. I'm doing this now, uh, but my next collection might be gambling or you know Vegas theme or something like that they got one hood they create one hoodie maybe two colors of it wait till they sell that then we live in a microwave society so a lot of the consumers you can't you can't get them a lot of room mm -hmm. you can't get them two weeks mm -hmm. of you not having nothing new not or three weeks of you not having nothing new right. better yet six weeks of you not having nothing new not they on yeah, to the next gone, it's yeah. no loyalty mm -hmm. with the customer mm -hmm. so you that's why we push out so fast like that Cause it's like, okay, this is fast fashion. Mm -hmm. You notice one of the most um, profitable brands in the world is Zara. Mm -hmm. They put new stuff out on the floor every other week. And guess what people still do? Come to Zara. I'm gonna go down, I know they, I was in there Friday, but I'm pretty sure they got at least two, three new items right, in there. Right. Mm -hmm. They want the new. People shopping based on the day. Right, yeah. It's gonna be hot tomorrow. Go mm -hmm. give me a little summer, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah that, that's the way it is. Yeah, it, it, so. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest advice I get about and understanding that you cannot do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Our team is we've we've had to weave through mm -hmm. a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some goods and some bad rotten apples in it. But your team is everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And sometimes your creativity could be blocked because you're doing so much other stuff mm -hmm. as the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some days I'll be hitting like, hey, I don't know what else to create. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm dealing with D.C. government paying sales tax and, you know, dealing with landlord paying them this and uh, trying to uh, deal with the manufacturer because he late. Mm -hmm. he, he 50 grand in the hole and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't get a chance to say, let me just focus on our next 15. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I know somebody on a smaller scale are probably going through hell right now mm -hmm. trying to figure it out because they got a post on the Instagram. They got to reply back to this person they didn't sent the wrong package to mm -hmm. and they trying to do that and shoot this and do that. So, like, that team important. That's what I would right, say to any right. up-and-coming job. Right. But clothing going to live on. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a new brand next week. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pray to God brand. that you can stay ahead of the trend right. and right. make good quality right. product right. at a price point that people can afford, the everyday customer. I'm not saying don't go make the $400 hoodie, but it's going to be tough when somebody keep coming in your spot and they got to make a lifetime decision every time they come in there. Nah, I got you at this 80 bucks. Get right. you on on about your business. And you said some key about having new merchandise every other week or every, you know, you don't want to get too long because 
It's what's worth any world when you got one of them dudes that spend heavy with you yeah. and he come and they give me, man, what's up? And he, I got everything in though, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you know yeah. he ready to drop we that. Oh, yeah, right we go through that. 1500. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, man, come that. on, Slim, what y'all gonna do? But you really yeah. got a lot of shit. You just yeah. you just be buying everything or am I get it, right? For real. But yeah, That's yeah. one thing about it though, like, man, we got some loyal customers. Right, yeah. I almost wanna do a real live like documentary on some of these people. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It's people I we see the line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we got a man yeah. Black Friday that come in that joint every yeah. Friday. Oh, yeah. man, and he I, walk I, out with trash yeah. bags. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Whole family, about a whole family yeah. stuff. And the whole neighborhood. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good so man right like, there. Nah, man. no question. I'm Good telling you. Right yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. Like yeah. we gotta put a jersey up and then raft this for him. Yeah, we doing a little yeah, we gonna do a little something for real. Yeah. And the question for you, Greg, give me some advice from the music scene, from what you right. say on the music scene, because for me looking at a lot of these blogs, I want to say, man, because I don't got to get the blog, but it's going to yeah. get information over there. I see a lot of beefing, a lot yeah. of pulling at each other. Like, what, what, what is it? What, give me some advice for the music, the move, the DMV music scene. Um, You know, in the DMV music scene, I truly believe that we would be much further than where we at. Mm -hmm. um, I know everybody use this and they say, oh, we got to band together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and we we've tried that uh, many times, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But in the music business, you gotta keep ego out of business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Keep ego in your messaging, mm -hmm. in your raps, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you gotta take the ego out your business, and you gotta be realistic with your expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes here in the music business, you know, you have people who are just not realistic about expectations. Mm -hmm. You got artists, honestly, that's not that good, you got production that's not that good, and they're not making this, a pa it's not really a passion for them. Mm -hmm. You know, they seeing what's going on in Atlanta, they see other places, and they like, they want a piece of it, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily a passion. Mm -hmm. You see what comes out of passion. Mm -hmm. You know, you see it every day in sports, you see it with the LeBron Jameses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I watched J. Cole go on uh, an interview the other day, I think it was with Forbes or something like that, mm -hmm. and he was talking about the three things that make him go, mm -hmm. right? And he was saying, man, look at the NBA. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough no more to just say, I want to be in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Your expe expectations should go past that, right? Mm -hmm. He was saying a lot of people want to say they want to go to the NBA, but what position in the NBA you want to play? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be the person that's playing in the G League mm -hmm. or you want to be LeBron James? Right. You got to have real expectations with that, though. Mm -hmm. It's not everybody is going to be the LeBron James, right? You got to know where you fit in that, and I believe that in this generation of musicians from this town, perception is reality, but not in the music business. Mm. <laughs> you understand mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. DC is a hard town with real G's mm -hmm. and there's real things going on here. And that's just not the music business. Right. It's not. You know what I mean? I mean, you seeing some things happening now because of this gen this generation. I, I wouldn't say DC. I'll say this generation. Mm -hmm. This generation has taken, they're actually the shooter now. Uh, yeah. And yeah. they doing the music. Yeah. Where yeah. as though back in the day, right. we had people like LL and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They might have been around the shooter. Mm -hmm. They wasn't the shooter. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. And they had that credibility because they had the hustlers behind them, mm -hmm. but they weren't the actual hustler. Right. And I think now we having an issue from this town, and this is why we always tried to leave with Wale first. Mm -hmm. Nobody understood. Mm -hmm. They like, man, come on, man, we need this done to throw. We need to tell our story from our city. Wale is telling the story from our city, mm -hmm. but he's telling the story of the backpacker, the poet, the sneakerhead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The person that's doing the uh, the open mics on U Street. DC is a much larger place than just you know the neighborhood in terms of anything gangster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so we can tell m many stories, but it seems like we only want to tell one. Yeah. So our thing was, let's continue to help while they get through the door first, mm -hmm. and then we can start grabbing the guys to tell that street story too, but we're going to do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like with Fat Trail, um, we had him studying Scarface. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Beanie Siegel, right? Because we felt like you can tell a story. It don't have to particularly be your story, but you could tell a story of what you viewed from your window mm -hmm. around E Street. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tell that story. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna let people know that we're telling that story. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be your story. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have to do that. You already come from one of the strongest cities in America. You know, anybody that come from the penitentiary, I got friends in every city, and they always tell me, man, show DC niggas, man. Yeah. That's all. No matter where they from. You know what I mean? I spoke with that and, little big bank. I mean, yeah, yeah, big fat and, yeah, yeah. and we we have been able to literally travel the country mm -hmm. with a bubble around us yeah. with Wale mm -hmm. because of you know, uh, and I'm not glorifying nothing yeah, yeah. in prison, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. From what a lot of guys have been able to lay down there mm -hmm. behind the wall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is a fact. Yeah, you know, everywhere we go, you tell me from DC, they like. Oh man, yeah, man, I got a good man that I was in with, or, or this, that, and the third, and they might check and see if who yeah. you are. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I truly believe the music scene here. First of all, I'm very proud of a lot of the artists from here um, that's making waves and doing it their way. Um, and I, I believe that if you be authentic to yourself, um, I think you know you'll begin to pick up, you know. Uh, you know, eyes and ears from the music business. But I'll, I'll say this. I think we could be in a much better position, the music business. And one of the reasons that we're not in the position that we are is because people not being authentic to themselves. Um, you know, and they're not being authentic to the region. Right. Everywhere you look, you look back in the day, um, music is regional. So if you remember when Nelly and them came out, mm -hmm. you know, um, for real, for real, most of Nelly's songs to me was some of my favorite nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. Underlay, underlay, mommy, ee yeah, ee yeah. Right. I said that in nursery school. Right. But the fact is, is that he was authentic to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything he had on mm -hmm. spoke back to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. His dialogue and everything else, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of his slang, it spoke back to St. Louis. Right. You know, and I look at people like, why somebody like Shaq is successful? Yeah. He looks DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He speaks DC. Mm -hmm. He's authentic to the DC culture, right. and people want authenticity to your region. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They don't want a New York dude that sound like he from LA. Right. Mm -hmm. They want New York to be New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They want Atlanta to be Atlanta. Mm -hmm. See, from DC, you got to be DC. Yeah, that's shock me. That's a good example. I, know, yeah. I mean, he first got this little fight. I, I went up there. They had a V up there. They had the whole joint. He had a the whole mm -hmm. block, everything just packed out. He had a yeah. hell of a movement come out the breakaway. They can, they can say what they want about DC dudes. Yeah. We gonna look fly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and he and he eludes that. He right. he bleeds that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and his whole temperament. Right. Now I was we I, I interviewed Mayno and uh, what's the boy, uh, Baller. Uh, oh, uh, Jim Jones. Jim Jones. Yeah. yeah. So you know I was like you know we talk talking shit. Yeah. I was like look man all that shit y'all talking in Harlem. They better take second seat. Y'all <laughs> yeah, yeah. keep coming to Harlem. Yeah, I was like, you yeah, ain't yeah, fuck with. Yeah, but Jim yeah. Jones said, y'all ain't who y'all, ain't got nobody who all they. So I'm like, you know, I don't know all the youngers no more, right? Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. so I'm naming, you know, he yeah. baller, at the ball. I mean, yeah, I could, yeah. I ain't, I, he had, he, he gave me a little stomach shock, and I ain't, I ain't really know all of them anymore. Right? <laughs> out the park, niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road. Yeah. Thank you for watching Changing Jewels on Kirkbone TV. If you like the jewels that we are dropping, Subscribe, hit the notification, and share with some friends. And I'll see you on the next episode of Changing Jewels, Kirkbone TV.